This suggests this is true. This is this 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 changes everything. This is legit. Yes, this is legit. So this is part of like like weird World War II history nobody talks about. This is the beginning of the Third Reich trying to create bases in Antarctica. <laughs> Welcome back to Midnight Mormons, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Carton Ellis, and today we are joined by Brad Whitbeck and Kuwaku L in the studio. And we're going to talk about, oh, jeez, what is this? Uh, what is this, Kuwaku? Uh, this is Maria Orsic, who is um, hot Hitler Nazi psychic medium lady. Psychic. So hot Nazi psychics yeah. that were talking to aliens? Yeah, she's talking to the Vrilya from Alderbon. What the what? freak? What did you just <laughs> say? <laughs> yeah, the Vrilya from Alderbon. Wait, okay. From so what? Alderbaran. Oh, I thought you said Alderon, and I was like, oh, great. Okay, now, now hold on. Before we go any further, this is legit. Yes, this is legit. So this is part of, like, like weird World War II history nobody talks about because it gets into weird esoteric territory, but it's really, really cool stuff. So. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, okay? <laughs> so basically. What, what's the symbol? I'm not sure. Him. That might be the symbol of the Vril Society or the Thule Society, but I'll get to what those are too. Okay. So um, <laughs> there's a book called The Coming Race. The Coming Race was written by an author in the late 19th century all about um, – Sounds very non-controversial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was about, uh, about a secret energy called Vril uh, that was found inside of the Earth, and Vril could power everything. It was similar to Nikola Tesla wanting to try to use – create – you know, uh, technology. Um, yeah, he not, wanted to, he, not relying on fossil fuels, an right? Ether generator, around right, the right, world. right. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, Vril is a certain energy that comes from inside of the Earth. Okay. Now, it uh, was you know it, it was fiction. It was thought, oh, okay, it's it's fiction. But a lot but of people started. What was it? Well, the guy who wrote it was like an initiate, and he was kind of a big wig and like all these secret societies and stuff. And so, a lot of those nineteenth okay. century books were authors will write fiction as a way to communicate actual uh, uh, hidden truths artists use lies to tell the truth while politicians use them to cover the truth up okay okay uh-huh they just do uh lewis carroll did it for alice in wonderland uh pixar does it lewis. all the time c.s lewis yeah so it's it's a thing so coming grace is written and um uh there's also the time when helena blavatsky and the and, and the and the theosophy the theosophic society starts oh, yeah, yeah, with yeah. the idea of ascended masters communicating with angelic light beings from around, from another planet okay um is becoming popularized well there's a woman named maria orsic that's this lady right here yes and oh boy i i i, I think she was austrian or um uh well, she she ends up coming to germany but she's from a different european okay uh, 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 country mm mm-hmm. mhm and Looks there's one thing very about, Swedish. Yeah, she's so she's supposed to be like incredibly beautiful. Like every boy who saw her was like, "Oh my goodness, she is gorgeous," right? Okay. And the thing about Maria Orsic was she was kind of thought to be an urban legend for a while, because people she sort of started like she was written about in history, but no one really could verify that she ever existed, right? Yeah. Um, but I'll get to how we got to verify that she existed and all this stuff was real. So this is well, Maria she Orsic. did. I mean, she is gorgeous. Look yeah. at that. I mean, she looks like a, 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 a model to this day. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. So Maria Orsic is this beautiful woman, and she says that she's contacting spirits. And she's contacting specifically light beings from another world that are communicating to her telepathically. Hmm. And so she she's a psychic, and she can, like, see these things, right? Okay. So where it gets weird like others wasn't weird, is um, she starts contacting them and they start telling her about Vril. Vril being a source of pure energy that could that could power all things and could create energy that could we could power cities, everything with Vril. Right? Okay, interesting, yeah. Now, um uh, she gets contacted by the German government and she gets uh, hired in. Um, and there's some and she's put into what's called the Thule Society. And the Thule Society had like people like Heinrich Himmler okay. and people like that in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but they weren't taking they they were kind of using her for her magic, but not taking her seriously enough. So she starts another organization, or it was started and she was allowed in it, called the Vril Society. Oh, interesting. And the Vril Society was dedicated to trying to find ways to get Vril, aka the secret energy that was inside of the world, right? Okay. Well, 
Adolf Hitler called her his Aryan goddess. He was like had the biggest like people horn dog for this woman. Really, um, really. And and she was kind of freaked out by him based on all the accounts we have because he was like you know let's kill everybody and she was like ah, I'm not sure if I'm into that but she was terrified. I mean you say no to him he'll kill you right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um so what they all started doing in the real side is all the women started growing their hair incredibly long. Is that right. what this is? Yeah. This picture's for? Okay. Yeah. They started growing their hair incredibly long. Interesting. Because it mirrored the women of the Vril Yah. And the Vril Yah ended up being the name of the being she was communicating with. Oh, So really? they were almost powered by this same energy called Vril. Oh. Now, um, the thing about it is Hitler started asking, he, he would be like, okay, where can we find the Vril? Interesting. Okay. And uh-huh. she would say, um, it... It's inside of the earth. And he would say, what do you mean it's inside of the earth? Yeah. It's inside of another world in the earth. In a hollow earth. Oh, weird. Right. So, um, yeah, there we go. So, um, Yeah, I'm looking at this. Wow. This, is this her? I'm not sure if that's her. But this is what the women of the real society looked like. They all had the incredibly long hair. Wow, wow that's Rapunzel's intriguing. Rapunzel's running around. And it, it, okay, was a, cool. it was a thing because they, it, like, it, I don't know, helped. It, it, so, something to do with, like, the connect. I don't know, some weird occult thing. But basically, um, this got this really garnered Adolf Hitler's interest in the Hollow Earth, and he was a big Hollow Earther. Okay, he cool. legitimately believed that there was a race of people inside of the Earth that were more technologically advanced, um, that had the secrets to the eternity and secrets, to, and they were going to come out one day. Now, um, uh, this is basically confirmed by Maria Orsic with her communications with the Vril Yah. But get this. The okay. real yeah, you know what they looked like according to her? No, what? Blonde hair, blue eyes, like you like the Aryan, 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 Aryan of Aryans, really? and they were like nine feet tall, like gods, basically. It, it, and does this stuff, her talking to Hitler about this, inspire his ideas about uh, the aliens, or was this her? Or was this like, just her playing along to, with him? Yeah, right? playing like, along with him, trying to say, "Oh no, your ideas are great, except well, for they're nine feet tall." It's uh-huh. like I'll one up you. Well, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Based on all accounts, she didn't like Hitler. She didn't like the, the... Yeah, but she might have feared for her life, or she might have liked the money. What, you never took a job or allowed somebody you didn't like in your dance party, but they paid a big ticket for the VIP Well, basically, she didn't, support, she didn't support his idea of, like, the, the Aryan worship, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, I think he already had these ideas, but they were exacerbated more by her, her, her telepathy with the real Yah. Okay. And so, this is the beginning of the Third Reich trying to create bases in Antarctica. Really? Yeah. Oh. Because they view that as one of the ways to get into the hollow earth. So this is why they were doing that? Uh, um, depends who you ask, but from okay. what I've read, it seems very, very likely that they viewed the Antarctic and the Arctic and the North and South Pole as entrances into the hollow earth. <laughs> okay. Whoa. So the Nazis were all about the hollow earth. Dude, oh, big time, big time, big time, big time. I can't even look this stuff up fast enough. You know what I'm saying? Now I have to look up Nazis and the hollow earth. I mean, is there going to be some kind of picture? And and before we go there, I do have to know, okay, what actually happened to this person? Yeah, to this. You know, what what happened to this Maria Orsic? Okay. Okay. So what happens is as it's looking like the war is not going to be won by Germany, everybody's freaking out. She just disappears, is never heard from again. Okay. People close to her, apparently, based on records, said that she begged the real Yah to take her away. Really? And they went. They literally came down, grabbed her, and grabbed her and took her to. So Alder they didn't Baron, take her to Middle world, Earth because look, New York Magazine here has an article from 2013 about how the big NAZIs came from Middle Earth and possibly still live there. What the heck? I mean, look that's at not, that. Wait, wait, that's not as crazy as you think. Look at that. that. Yeah. So. Okay. By the way, the Nazis had UFOs. Uh, yeah, like they were working on it, right? You you think they finished them and yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. They okay. Did. So wait, hold so, on. We got to go back to this girl right here. Yeah. Uh, Maria Orsic. Maria Orsic. Is, yeah. Okay. So Maria Orsic right here. She's our uh, Swedish babe psychic that was used yeah. quite heavily by the Germans. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. So. Uh, she just disappears and go and, and, and we don't know if she died, killed herself, who knows, or if she was taken by the Vril Yah into to the Alder Baron galaxy where, where the Vril Yah come from. Okay. And uh, she was kind of like 
Well, she became one of them. They like like grew her to become this interdimensional Aryan god. Um, but where this gets wild is they had all of this all of the stuff written down, okay. all of the revelations from her written down on where to find a hollow earth, how to build certain things. They were getting so much information on how to build weapons and all this stuff from Maria Orsic. Okay. Okay. Um, now. Here's where it gets weird. Is it was thought. <laughs> Here's where it gets. She weird. was just yeah. said. She was literally just said to like be kind of an urban legend. We, no one really knew where she came from, and they thought that oh, you know, honestly, they made up the whole real society and all that. Maria Orsic never existed. We have no record of her or anything. Okay. And she was invented in the 1980s by a bunch of like weird German occultists who were obsessed with this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Until we found two documents. The first document. Okay. Because remember, this idea of Vril, they also thought was just created in the 80s or 70s. Okay. Until we found the document referencing the Vril Society um, okay. from like the 1940s. Okay. And then we found another one mentioning uh, the, uh, the idea of harvesting Vril from the Hollow Earth from right uh, in the middle of uh, World War II. Really? So, Where'd so they find them? Where'd they find these documents? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I, know, I know that they, I think they've been scanned and put online. So okay. one's like a pamphlet. Like a gotcha. newsletter pamphlet, and the other is like a like a journal entry, but um, we were to disprove the fact that this was just a thing made up in the seventies and eighties, and now we know the Vril Society legitimately existed, and they were trying to harvest Vril, the Aryan energy, to power the entire world and make them the dominant army. Mm-hmm. Now, Hitler was obsessed with trying to find this place, right? Okay. And again, so I, if we talked about stuff like this in like history class, World War Two, everyone would have been like, "Whoa, dog!" Oh, dude, I would have been tell you. so into my history class. Yeah, you I have that was. picture. You have that picture of the girl on the head of the history book, and all the dudes are paying attention. Oh yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Okay. So, so then what happens is, um, she, uh, well, Hitler, you know, commits in his bunker, right? Yeah. Well. But if you don't believe he showed up in my mission in Argentina, but we can talk about that a different day. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, remember yeah. that's the thing. We turns out the fragment of the skull we have is a woman's skull. It's not his. Yeah. So they think. Well, they think it might have been his then wife because they supposedly married right before Eva Braun. She died. Yeah, right. That it was Eva Braun. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Well, there, I mean, it still doesn't solve the problem of there's a skull where missing. he is. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So we don't know like where he went. There are two theories. The theory he went to Argentina. Yeah. If you still think that's a theory, but keep going. <laughs> or <laughs> um, the fact that 2,000 uh, Nazis disappeared, including high-ranking Nazi leaders, disappeared. Not through Operation Paperclip? No, no, but they, they, they made it through Spain, and they also made it through the rat lines into you Italy. You believe that? You know, oh, yeah, because we've got the U-boat bases in Spain that were built by Franco. And you know where else we have them? Where? The Arctic. Where's the U-boat? Where's the Nazi U-boat? I would let I do. I will tell you. I okay, will tell I, you. I'm okay. googling this right now. Wait, wait, wait. Because so Google theory. doesn't suppress information so they, or lie. They, they two, took submarines into the Hollow Earth, or they took UFOs. Oh well, that did not get yeah. less crazy. <laughs> this escalated really quickly. Okay, keep going. So here's where it gets real weird. Well, the theory is if. Hitler knew he he knew how it was looking. He was going to lose, and he needed an escape plan. And he took one thousand nine hundred ninety nine people with him. Really, to go into the Hollow Earth. Mm-hmm. Now, you may think this is weird, but Operation High Jump by the U.S. government was the exploration into the Arctic to make sure that there were no Nazis hiding there. Oh, oh. and you know who was on that expedition? Oh no, Admiral Bird. Admiral Bird. Richard Bird Sr. Really? Oh, the same guy that said when he flew over this, the yeah. North Pole, this he is when, found. Yeah. Oh, so, he was the Navy yeah. Admiral that had won a bunch of very esteemed- Yeah, high secret naval officer in the entire in United States history. Met with Eisenhower, he's got like statues and stuff around the country. So this guy basically goes in and he, And look at this. It says like Google Earth image supposedly shows a U-boat surfacing through the ice cap, and they were known to have been able to withstand the freezing freezing temperatures. They were developed to withstand, because don't forget, the north of Germany goes into the Baltic Sea, which leads to Sweden and all of the glaciers and the ice caps there. So we know that U-boats were meant to withstand um, even the, the 
the ones made in the teens and the twenties were extremely um, cold proof. I don't know what the term is, but wow. Okay, look at this. Keep going, Quaku. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. So now, um, the uh, the theory is Bird. Well, he writes down in a journal. So there's a journal that appears. Okay. Okay. Um, all about his journey. Okay. And it's incredibly detailed. Incredibly okay. detailed. His journey to South yeah. Antarctic. Or the Antarctic, not yeah. the Arctic. Yeah, okay, yeah. Keep the, going. the Antarctic. And um, okay. he says he's first thing he sees is a mammoth. Like a big woolly mammoth. What? Yeah. Okay, now I have to look up. Like a Karelum. Bird and no, the I know what that is. Kurloms and Kumas. Oh, oh, Kurloms and Kumas. Yeah, okay. Well, he going. sees a woolly mammoth, and then he sees and none of his controls and his plane are working. Really? Like they're not working, they're not working. He looks to his right and looks to his left, and he sees two flying saucers that have, like, energetically taken over control of his plane. And they bring him into the hollow earth where he sees, like, these giants, and they start interacting with him. And so these giants start talking to him, and there's, like, these big Aryans and, like, the blue Hindu people and all that stuff. And they're talking to him, and they're saying, we are worried right now because we do not interfere with um, mankind's wars. But you guys have just – you guys are now playing around with atomic energy. You have just bombed two cities in Japan. Yeah. And that worries us because atomic energy is not something you can mess with because if it, if it messes with our energy, the real energy, it could create an absolute catastrophe of the universe, right? Oh, interesting. Okay. So that's what they tell him is that you've been selected. Please go tell your leaders. So he goes back. And I'm gonna, I'm biffing the names, but if you want to go look up uh, Mr. Mythos on YouTube, he does a whole like great rendition of this. And like, look, he there's the he, here's an entire scanned film of Bird's 1933 to 1935 expedition into the Antarctic right here that you can check out on YouTube. That shows, look at that, the unexplored region of the Antarctic yeah. that he went to. Well, boom, shaka laka. Okay, oh, keep going. Which, uh, by the way, has possible pyramids. In oh it? yeah. The History Channel has some stuff, literally like showing these pyramids in the snow in uh, Antarctica, and wow. like the alignment of them is just like the pyramids in uh, Egypt, with okay. their north-south alignment. It's really weird. All right. Anyway, okay. So keep going. Keep going, Quaku. Yeah. So then, um. Well, he tells his direct superior about everything. And his direct superior is like, this is really important. We need to, like, people people need to know about this. Okay. So his superior um, is told by government officials, never talk about this ever. Also, you're fired. Really? You're no longer a government employee. And this sets his superior into incredible depression. He's very, very sad about it. And they take him to a mental health hospital. Okay. Um, and he's isolated completely. Oh, this then is starting to sound familiar. Jumps off of uh, the roof of this uh, psychiatric uh, hospital. He was retreat. Epstein. Well, it's just weird that uh, he, you know, he. This is the superior that Bird reported to. Yeah. Get out of town. So he jumps off of 16, 16 stories to kill himself. Whoa! All just because. And by the way, by the way, remember he's no longer a government employee, but he's still taken to a, a, a military hospital. Even uh. though he's no longer in the rules. So then. You go, that's kind of weird, but you know what? People people who serve in the military, unfortunately, due to the trauma of military and having, having left World War II and seeing all sorts of horrors, yeah. it, was, it was quite common for people to, to end their own lives. Well, it's, an, it's not weird until in Maryland, they find the body of a, uh, of a dead homeless man. Okay. And you go, yeah, it was a homeless guy killed. He's dead in this warehouse, warehouse. Don't think about it. Okay. Until someone in the case said, that's not a homeless man. That's the son of Richard Byrd. Really? Richard Byrd Jr. is found dead in a warehouse. After publishing After, his dad's journals. Yeah, leaking the journals of his dad, confirming everything about the Hollow Earth and, 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 uh, and the search for uh, uh, well, what was in there with Vril. Can I get back to Maria Orsic? Whoa. Yeah. yeah. So basically, um, but, but now the journal's out there. You can read it. And... Uh, uh, you can read Richard Bird's journal? Yeah. Yeah, dude. You read a line, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I got to get this thing. And, okay, and the craziest going. part is how not crazy he sounds in his journal. 
Like yeah. he's not like writing like some raving lunatic like I'll work in no play mix jack a dull boy through this, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. he's like totally lucid, just like here's all the things that I saw. <laughs> it's like And it all started just because of this chick right here. Uh-huh. Who has mostly been scrubbed from history. Really? Yeah. Where's she buried? Nowhere. We don't know where she went. She either died mysteriously. Or was taken up by the Vril Yad, dude. Oh, That's dude, we got to find this chick, man. Ha- get her on the podcast, man. <laughs> yeah, get her on the podcast. Well, the thing about it is, if this, so what this suggests, though, if it's true, is crazier than what Justin Griffin was suggesting, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> if, More foundationally okay. changing yeah. to the history of the world. If this suggests this is true, this, is, this, this, this changes everything. Everything, everything, everything. If there's a hollow earth with nine feet tall beings in there with, with, with an energy power called real that can help you live forever, okay. and can power the entire world, that changes everything. So that's why the New Yorker wrote the article saying, you know what? Boom shakalaka. But the also Nazis what- came from Middle East. Uh, sorry, from Middle Earth and possibly still live there. Well, also what that means is okay. if Adolf Hitler did actually escape, he's alive. Because he would have had the power to have lived. Oh, because yeah. of the vril, off of the, the vril, vril, vril yeah. for longer. And he and his army are waiting down there. Um, <gasps> you know what I just realized, bro? I've often thought he's the Antichrist, the biblical Antichrist, and he went to descend into on the underworld and come back as a mock of what Christ did. Well, right? you know what's so interesting oh, though yeah. is, interesting. is 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 hold yeah, on a yeah. second. So I've been studying the post war sightings of Hitler, and it was all the way up until the seventies that we actually have official documentation of the CIA, um, especially in the late 40s and 50s, the CIA and both the FBI investigating claims of having seen him because they didn't believe that the Russians actually had killed him. Okay. And they started out investigating claims in Eastern Germany and then Denmark, then down into Spain. Okay. Then via U-boat or his personal airplane, which could have taken off from Berlin if he went through a secret hidden tunnel they didn't even find until 2013. Okay. Or his personal UFO. Oh, yeah, I doubt it was a UFO. <laughs> I actually think it was a plane that we know that we had and we know could travel the distance over the Pacific Ocean. Oh, okay. Interesting. Having landed in Argentina, okay. Then after having, because we know Mengele was there. You know what I'm saying? They found Eichmann there. In my mission, Mengele lived in peace to the end of his days into the 70s as a unlicensed dentist and doctor that unfortunately probably performed big a words for people you know what i'm saying um mm-hmm. yeah he was he, he was uh, once a level of psychosis you can't imagine but anyway um then the most credible place they could find him was in bariloche which is in the south of argentina getting closer and closer and closer and closer to what oh Antarctica. The most southern city in the world where you can go take the pictures at Tierra del Fuego. The city in Tierra del Fuego is Ushuaia, which is the southernmost city in the world where you throw the boiling water in the air and it comes down as ice and the whole nine yards. If you want to cross over the tip uh, um, in a cruiser of South America to make it up into New York, you have to go through there. And then the Argentine Coast Guard helps you not hit icebergs and stuff like that. But yeah, Tierra del Fuego is literally basically oh touching Antarctica. Oh. And that's the resort community, Bariloche, where supposedly he was found in that compound. And what's crazy is in those mountains, there are entire German cities. My mission in Buenos Aires, Argentina, was a German-speaking mission until 1989. If you got called to serve in Buenos Aires in 1988, you might go as a German-speaking missionary or as an English-speaking missionary uh, because there were Welsh colonies. So Americans would oftentimes learn Castellano, which is Argentine Spanish, or German all the way up until 1989. And when you go and you look in the mountains along the Andes, which lead to Bariloche, which lead to South uh, the sorry, um, Antarctica, you will have entire cities of 40, 50, 60,000 people. They're all second, third and fourth generation Germans. Dude. Well, that's crazy. Man. That helps answer the question for me, because I've always wondered why the freak Argentina. Oh, no. Like, here's why. all the random countries to go. No, to. No, this is awesome. Church history here, too. By uh-huh. the way, do you know what the largest expatriate speaking congregation in Salt Lake City 
um, I think to this day still is. They might have been sur- they've been surpassed by uh, Spanish speaking congregations, but like all the way up until probably the '90s, do you know what the largest foreign speaking congregation in Salt Lake City was? What German speaking. Really? In fact, the German missionary efforts in the late 19th century so successful that Helmuth Hubner was one of probably about 2,000 members of the church in Hamburg when he uh, um, when he was captured by the Reich. Right. And when World War Two broke out, the reason why so many uh, Nazis fled to South America was because the famines that preceded World War One caused a massive migration of German families to South America. So there are already one or two generations of multiple family members that people had already living in Argentina. So what better place to escape to? In fact, Argentina got so rich that in 1945, their peso was worth more than the U.S. dollar because they were selling wheat, sugar, milk, honey, meat and food to both the Axis and the Allied powers. Mm -hmm. They were selling Germany ammunition and food and MREs Mm. and milk and honey. And they're also selling the exact same thing to the allies powers. They were invading and just getting wildly rich off of it. So yeah, I mean, I see this dude. I see this. So anyway, where do we go from here? Where is she? How do we find her? And, um, um, well, get her on the show. (laughs) Well, you'd have to only, you'd have to find her. You would to go grab some psychic or whatever, you know, who wants to like, okay, but I I don't know that. Uh, (laughs) but, uh, so that's where you draw the line. Well, (laughs) We don't know if it's a real quote or not, if he actually said it. Okay. Um, but the whole thing of like I I shall um, I shall emerge from the grave, um, and uh, and 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 the, and the ghost of my past shall shall haunt the nations of the world, and you shall know that Sounds I was like right. Sounds like Houdini or something. Who was well, that? Well, it's supposed to be Hitler said it, right? He was like made this thing. Uh, you will know what I was oh, right really? when I come back. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Um, oh, weird. And uh, and and if you if you believe in the Hollow Earth theory that he actually escaped and went there, then that would that would make him the biblical antichrist wanting to come back. Um, you know, so kind of uh it, it's it's kind of crazy but yeah this whole thing starts with this blonde chick maria orsic who was just yeah. who was a sit- okay so before we end this year i just want to make sure that i got this right this blonde chick maria orsic yeah gorgeous girl makes it to germany she's obsessed with the occult soon develops a reputation as a psychic shall we say right. okay and then her reputation precedes her so much that she ultimately ends up being involved in correspondence with Nikola Tesla, the great scientist that invented alternating current and worked with Thomas Edison and so on and so forth. And Edison stole a bunch of his stuff. Edison was a piece of garbage. Yeah, yeah. Edison was a piece of garbage that ended up stealing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But anyway, she starts this, uh, she first joins the Thule Society, which preceded the Reich, and then ended up starting her own called the Vril Society, which is based off of this mystical energy that is supposedly found in the center of the earth, in which we've now uncovered documents confirming her existence. Okay. And she is the one that supposedly gave a lot of the information to um, the leaders of Germany in World War II that supposedly used it to develop UFOs and other aircraft and so on and so forth because she claimed to be able to talk with this mystical place called Albadaran where you can fly at the speed of light. Okay? Aldebar- Aldebaran. Aldebaran. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the last call of Maria Orsic is the date of March 11, 1945, after which she disappeared. The document Vril Golischaft, or whatever it's called, letter from Maria Orsic, was sent to all members. And then in 1945, she was 50 years old, which would make her over 100 now. So it's dubious that we could be able to find her now. But there is evidence of her existence. And that existence being what ultimately inspired Hitler to go look for Middle Earth in Antarctica, which is ironically very close to Bariloche and Argentina and all the places that many of the Nazis escaped to through the rat lines after the war. That's what you're saying. Yes, with the addition of the fact that, um, yeah, she was 50 uh, in 1945, but it was said that she never, she she didn't look a day over 22. Oh, Oh, and because of the Brill stuff. Yeah. Making her not wow. age. And so the theory is that at some point when she was communicating with them, they'd gotten such a good relationship as they would, they were like, 
like Sending putting her frill, frill on her as they were like, yeah. And so she never looked over 22 and she was like the most beautiful woman ever, which is why everyone paid attention to what she had to say. And then, yeah, so so it's a whole it's a whole crazy, which thing. is why we got to get yoked. So people pay more attention to us on this show like Brad is doing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my God. No. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, well, yeah, so All right. Crazy, awesome. Yeah. Hey, last little side note before we cut off. Yeah. It's actually because of German members that we uh, have the um, gospel being taught in South America, Central America and Mexico. You may not realize this, but Parley P. Pratt tried to go to South America. He went to Chile. He actually buried a son there. And he had such an unsuccessful mission there and a frustration with the language that he ended up coming back, right? So the first attempts to teach south of the border were an epic failure, so much so that Brigham Young and Joseph Smith only sent missionaries west to the Polynesian islands and then east to Europe, right? However, because of those famines that had made so many um, Germans leave uh, Germany and Berlin and go to Argentina. Many of them that left were members of the church and they found themselves in the middle of Buenos Aires, Argentina with large amounts of expatriate Mormons, but no chapel, no priesthood authority, no area authority or anything. So they started writing letters to Salt Lake City saying, please send missionaries here. Please open up the missionary work here. Just like the uh, African did uh, oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. kind of opened up Africa for the preaching of the gospel. Right. And so um, Elder Ballad had to go down in 1919 and dedicate all of the land south of the border for the preaching of the gospel. So Mexico was dedicated as a land of missionary work through Argentina first. And the missionaries actually came up through Argentina, Brazil, then Central America, and then Mexico. We actually overshot it and then worked our way upwards <laughs> Back into America nice. because there were so many expatriate Germans during the famines that created World War One that left Germany and went to Argentina. Crazy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I got to say about that. Uh, this was cool. Do you think she did it before we go? Do you think she did it? Do you think she was legitimately? Do you think this woman right here, Kwaku, in all of your honest of honest opinions, do you think this woman was actually was actually communicating with anything significant? Or was she just blowing smoke to get uh, money from money from the Reich? I think she was communicating with them only because she started this before the Reich. Oh, that's true. It was 1919 when she started yeah. doing this. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So, Do you think any of them is still alive? Do you think the Thule or the Vril Society still exists and it's out there? I, I don't know, but... Boy, if the Earth is actually hollow, that that changes everything in world history. Nothing nothing matters anymore. Like if that is true and there's another world inside of the world, then literally every, every single every single uh, book about theology and science can be destroyed. Well, would the Book of Mormon be destroyed if it was true? No, no, book about theology. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, every all the cool ancient stuff which references this, like the Book of yeah. Mormon talks about people in the earth, which we never even talk about. You know, Wait, the Book of Mormon talks about people in the yeah. earth. It does. Yeah. And and things like under the earth and what? Yeah. Okay. Where the, the lost ten tribes go to, Cardin? Where do they go? Oh yeah, we did that. They I went north. That. Apparently okay. into the hollow earth. We're ending this before Kwaku. my brain explodes. <laughs> <laughs> We're ending this before my brain explodes. This has been Mormons. See you guys in the next episode.